today. You're watching the Weather Classroom. Bill Keneally here today alongside Dennis Smith. And today's topic will deal with the wind. Talk about the land breezes and the sea breezes, for instance. In addition, we'll talk more about severe weather awareness. This week, it's being observed in parts of the central Gulf Coast. First of all, as far as the wind goes, let's talk about the general circulation, the flow of air. Generally, around high pressures clockwise, there's one of those highs, right about 30 degrees north latitude. Then you have the low pressure area. This is our storm track, pretty much, moving on through near where the uh, polar easterlies meet up with the westerlies. And there's your trade winds blowing. And you have what they call the uh, doldrums down around the equator. That's where the wind is tending to be very, very light. Now, as far as our sea breeze goes, again, the circulation generally like this. The air of the land areas heats up, so as that air lifts, filling the void will be the cooler air coming in off of the water, and that will be the uh, sea breeze effect. The land breeze occurs at night when the air over the land is actually cooler. The land over the water is warmer. That area is lifted, and then you have the air coming in from the land back on over to the breeze offshore onto the water. Now, for more on sea breezes, here's Jeff Morrow. If you're at the ocean, you may enjoy the benefits of nature's air conditioner, the sea breeze. A sea breeze is a wind blowing from the water inland. What causes it? Look to the sun for the answer. The summer sun heats up the land much faster than the adjacent water. The land heats, then heats the air above it, which causes the air to rise. As the air rises, it creates a space. The less heated air over the water rushes inland to fill that space. The rush of cooler air coming over you from the water is a sea breeze. Another pleasant benefit of the sea breeze is that afternoon thunderstorms often form where the cool ocean air meets the hot, humid land air. Because of the sea breeze, this usually occurs miles inland and keeps thunderstorms away from the beach. You may see the storms or even hear the thunder, but it probably won't rain on you at the beach. It doesn't happen all the time, but often during the summer, a sea breeze will keep your beach vacation cooler and drier. I'm Jeff Morrow, The Weather Channel. As we continue with the wind, we're going to get into the windward and leeward side of a mountain. As the air blows over, it has to go somewhere, and it's forced up over the mountain, and a lot of the precipitation falls in the category of up the slope of the mountain or the windward side. Then we get into a problem where we get the leeward side. It's usually a hot, dry wind that blows through this area. Speaking of hot, dry winds, let's check out the Santa Ana wind. The Santa Ana winds of Southern California have been the scourge of firefighters for many years. These winds do not start brush fires, but they aggravate the conditions that allow fires to develop. And naturally, wind makes fires grow and spread rapidly. This hot, dry wind generally forms when high pressure is situated near the Great Basin. Clockwise airflow around the high brings in air over the mountains and desert. Some of this air picks up speed as it's funneled through the mountain passes and canyons of the San Gabriel and San Bernardino Mountains. Santa Ana's make conditions ripe for wildfires by sucking the moisture out of already dry vegetation. Under these conditions, a tiny spark can quickly turn into a raging wildfire. Alan Jackson, The Weather Channel. Again, this week is uh, Severe Weather Awareness Week in the states of Oklahoma, Arkansas, Tennessee, Mississippi, and Alabama. Basically, tells you what to do in case of an impending storm, be it a tornado or a severe thunderstorm, where you should be if you're in your house, where you should be if you're in your car, where you should be if you're out in the open land. And we'll talk more about that in greater detail in a minute. In addition, now, the annual average number of thunderstorms very high over all those areas, especially in the Gulf Coast. The time of the year, usually late winter, early spring, Gulf Coast, and then moving into the later spring into the Midwest. Now for more on tornado formation, here's Charlie Welsh. In any given year, the U.S. reports more tornadoes than any other country worldwide, on average over 800 a year. Why do so many tornadoes form in the United States? Tornadoes normally occur when warm, moist Gulf air meets cool Canadian air. The warm air rises, clouds form, storms develop. 
wind shear, winds at different altitudes blowing in different directions, causes the air between the layers to begin spinning, almost like a horizontal tornado, although not nearly as fast. When this horizontally rotating air meets an updraft, the rotating tube can become stretched and tilted. As the now nearly vertical tube tightens its spin, it speeds up, and the result? a tornado that has the potential of causing loss of life and extensive property damage. Charlie Welsh, The Weather Channel.